Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we get to review another Spinnaker and another Spence. I already reviewed the Spence Drab Edition with its stealthy matte black dial and bezel and minimalistic and simple hands and markers. This time we review a version that is a bit flashier thanks to the use of gold colored details. The case is the same shape and size as the Drab, so 41.5mm in diameter with a 46.8mm lug to lug. It is a good size as it doesn't overwhelm a small wrist while it won't look dainty on a larger one either. This variant comes with IP coating done in black and although I'm not a fan of any kind of coating, I have to admit the black really goes hand in hand with the gold colored details. It may be the least a durable variant of this model, but to me it sure is the prettiest. But that's just me and if you follow my channel, you know I'm a bit biased when it comes to black and gold used on dive watches, as one of my grails is a Seiko Golden Tuna. I just feel black and gold are a match made in heaven when it comes to watches. The bad side of this is the already mentioned durability. No matter how tough a coating is, it does eventually wear out and scratch, showing the bare metal underneath. Because of that, coated watches don't age as well compared to their bare stainless steel brethren. So if durability is your concern, you should check out the other variants of this model. The bezel is a combination of a matte black insert with loomed markers and gold colored grip. Although the teeth are pretty small and dull, operating the bezel is very easy. I guess it's down to the fact you have a large area to grab, as the bezel is pretty thick, and partly it's down to the level of resistance that the 120 clicks give you. It's on the soft side, but not too soft to make it turn on its own. Another impressive thing is the fact it lines up perfectly with the markers on the dial, something Spinnaker seems to be doing right. In fact, when it comes to the little flaws, like blotches of loom, uneven application, misalignments and generally bad quality control, Spinnaker is pretty good at it. Whether you like them or not, they are well-made watches. I have reviewed about a dozen of them and none had any serious flaws that we take for granted with more expensive brands. The dial is done in a textured finish, something that is slowly becoming Spinnaker's signature design. But unlike other models that have a very rough texture to them, on this it is made finer with smaller grains, giving the dial a more restrained look. The easiest way to explain the difference is sandpaper grades. So if other models I reviewed use sandpaper level 80 for example, this would be more like 180. That means it reduces light reflections, but still gives out some sheen. The hour markers may appear as just painted, but they're not. They're actually raised and then painted with loom. In fact, even the minute hashes are raised, which gives a cool shadow effect on the dial when you hit the right angle. And I personally like it. Both the logo and the date window are applied in gold color to match the black and gold theme of the watch, which makes me wonder why they decided to go with a white date disc. A black one would have looked so much better and would have matched the theme of the watch perfectly. In my opinion, that was a bad decision by Spinnaker. Speaking of bad decisions, hands are another. The fact they're done in gold is a good thing. The fact that they're Rolex sub hands is not so good. I don't know why Spinnaker refuses to accept their own original hands that were actually used on the first generation of Spence and ones that I really like. They're easily readable, easy, easily distinguishable from each other and most importantly original in design. These on the other hand are just so generic and used by so many micro brands they're becoming boring. And the last bad decision Spinnaker made is the usage of a mineral instead of sapphire crystal. Spence was always made with a mineral, but times have changed. Today many micros will get you sapphire at $200. Hell, even Spinnaker themselves have models with sapphire for that much money, while they ask $300 for this. Yes, you can use discount codes like my WatchGeek20 to get 20% off, but even at 240 I wish they made it with a sapphire. 
the fact that they raised the prices compared to the first two generation of Spence and the fact that they went with even worse handset compared to the second generation makes the first generation of Spence my favorite. So if you can live with regular applied hour markers, I would advise you to check out the first generation that is still available on their site. Not only will you get the most bang for your buck, but you will also get the most original looking watch of all three Spence generations. Not to mention the white date disc on that model makes more sense, as the markers are a combination of gold and white. Well, that completes this week's video, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, 